Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to part four of this week's episode of Leading Our Own Way. We're getting into some valuable insights from this week's guests that you can definitely apply to your own journey. Please definitely stay tuned for advice and inspiration that can help us all. If you missed the first part of the week in part one, two, and three, definitely go back. The show notes should be filled with all the links, so go and click on them if you need to catch up. Also, definitely subscribe to the channel and all the other ones if you can. It's going to really help the show. But for now, enjoy the rest of the story. I had the sales experience. I had done sales before that heaps, um, you know, in, in small jobs. But they wanted a bachelor's degree. They wanted an arts, psychology, teaching, something like this. And I, I didn't take no for an answer. So the more that they told me no, the more that I tried harder. So much in, so much so that I interviewed for three years. With it still no like, degree and you still went for interviews. Yeah, three years. Wow. Um, I was told no, no, no. And I was just doing it. It like it like it became like a second job, <laughs> you know, just yeah. applying for applying for jobs. Um, any 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 means necessary, I was gonna get this job, and I would have taken anything, mm. like some type of some something close to that. Like I didn't have to be, you know, um, that I would have I would have sold vitamins, you know, yeah. just anything related to that, just so I can get my stepping stone in. And then I interviewed um, with Australia's biggest pharmaceutical company at the time. And they said yes. Surely they was going to say no. They're the biggest company. And then I'm like, I didn't believe them at the start. I'm like, no, like, you know, you don't really mean yes. <laughs> Surely there's a mistake. You know, you're not, you know, you're not wanting to hire me. You, you know, I've not got a degree, right? <laughs> Yeah, she's like, and they're like, well, that's not what we see. You know, we see that you've got grit, you've got determination. Um, it's more than a degree. Yes. More, more than a piece of paper. Character and I'm like, personality gets you so much further than what's on these academic programs that you're asking you, you do, to, you know, memorize everything they teach you, basically. Yeah. Right. Up until the point where even, even, when, they, even when I signed the contracts and they gave me the car, I was shaking my, like my hands were shaking when they were handing me the keys. Cause it, at the time it was like, I had won like a million dollars. Yeah. That's yeah. how it felt to me. Especially right? it, it, that's because of the buildup of everything you've been through though, isn't it as well? Yeah. 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 And even when I was driving the car, I would often think my phone's going to ring now and they're going to say, Hey, Karim, we've made a mistake. You have to, you know, give back your, give back the keys. You know, it's all, it's all been a misunderstanding. And that would have been more natural for me because my mindset was I was not deserving. Yeah. Right. All the way back to when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. 90% yeah. of the guess things is from, from the childhood. A hundred percent. Right. So this was something else that I had to carry. Yeah. So then I, um, I was in, I was in pharmaceuticals and I did really well. To the point where um, the business started to go down, but I was like the last man standing. We had two or three teams come through, but because I had so much um, resilience, I was in six months. In six months' time, I was probably one of the um, the senior guys there because everyone just started to leave because it was so tough. It was tough. It was a tough environment, but I was there. I, I, I was there for four years. Nice. Um, and I did really well. Just and then I moved into medical devices and then, yeah. So what do you do with the medical devices? You, you, you pay it. You weren't just selling them. You were actually, I, I remember you previously telling me you were actually in. Yes. I was, I was scrubbed up. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the company that I, that, that hired me for medical devices. Yeah. Um, they were strict really strict. So they flew us to California for two or three weeks to undergo some uh, heavy training. And when I mean heavy, very like Americanized. So um, they flew you over and as soon as you landed, you had to uh, verbatim 
uh, repeat the company story. Oh. The company story was like a page long and you had to repeat it word for word. If you got less than 95%, what? that would fly you home again. They didn't care how much it costs or whatever. If you didn't understand, if you didn't know the company story word for word, that would fly you back home. How are you supposed to, I mean, I'd like to think I've been working on my memory, but I yeah. don't, I don't know how to ever remember 95% of, uh, of the words on a document. Mm-hmm. Did you? I, I had to. So I was practicing day and night in the shower, in the toilet, on the plane. I was telling it to strangers. <laughs> to the person next to me. Well, that's the way to do it, isn't it? If you tell, if you teach somebody, if you say whatever you've been learning, yeah, you learn it twice. If you say it again, yeah. you learn it three times. That's the best way to do it. Yeah, totally. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it set the tone for the rest of my time when I was there. It was probably one of the hardest times. Yeah, because we had we had to sit exams every third day, memorizing, memorizing like pages and pages. And if we, if ever we got below 95%, that would fly us home. How many people got flown home? Uh, I reckon there was less than half in the room left. So we would like all dropping like flies. Could imagine. Like, you know, it was sort of like, um, what's that Korean TV show? Oh, I know. It's where, you they were, where they kept shooting people. <laughs> Yeah, and they just started, like, it, people just started dying everywhere. The, oh, I forgot. And they're wearing their weird suits. They're wearing the red, yeah, they're wearing the red suits. Oh, God, somebody said, uh, the, uh, somebody said, the kid said this at game because we played red light, green light. Yes. <laughs> and then the thing came out and shot them. We played yeah. it at school the other week, but it's been a game forever, so don't shout at me, viewers, that I played red light. <laughs> kid. We're not shooting the kids. Um, so yeah. these guys obviously had to leave their, their jobs to accept this one. Yeah. But then they went home without a job. That's insane. Insane, man. Insane. Wait, what's their reasoning for that uh, approach? Um, they were a new, not, not new, but they were like, they wanted to be seen serious in the market. That our reps, our people were the best in the industry. I mean, is that the way to, to look like the serious contenders in the industry? Right, I right. Know. Look, it did, it did build a lot of um, credibility for me because mm. anyone who passes this is seen as like, oh my gosh, you, did you pass or not? You know, like it was a big thing. Like the Navy SEALs, aren't you? It was, <laughs> that's how I felt, right? <laughs> it was, it, yeah, it was bad. It was bad. Like I would be on the phone to my wife, like, hey, I'm going to come home. I can't do this. You know, I'll just, you would have four hours sleep each night. Yeah, wow. And you had to repeat the whole thing over again and it just became so exhausting. It was like, is it even worth it? Was it? Um, I had no other choice. So it was like every everything leading up to me, leading up to this moment was, everything leading up to this moment was preparing myself for this. Every tough situation that I was been in, you know, I've been in a lot of, like, I'm very resilient. Mm because of those tough situations. And I, and I really wanted this job. I really, really wanted it because it's going to open up a lot of doors. You know, it's going to, it's, it's what I wanted to do. Yeah. I really wanted to work with high performers like surgeons. It was like the closest thing that I could get as being a surgeon. Yeah. Without being a surgeon. So being, 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 a, surrounding myself with these like, sort of like gods, you know, mm. that are so incredibly intelligent that I was able to mentor them in a way. Um, so yeah. you're, you're suited up then, not suited up. You are scrubbed Scrub. up. Is that yep. the terminology? You're scrubbed up. You're in the room with these surgeons and you're yep. doing what with them? So the thing with surgeons is they learn for years, right? It's sort of like forever. Yeah. That by the time that I'm they st- get out of, by the time they get out of um, medical school, uh, there's a lot. There's been a, like a lot of medical advancements. Yeah, that's true. So yeah. a lot of um, medical devices have been improved or upgraded. That they need to keep up to date with with what's out there. Mm-hmm. So it's our job as representatives of the company to go in there. So if a surgeon was using one of our products, and there was an update or an upgrade, um, we needed to be there to make sure that he's using our products properly. Mm-hmm. 
Um, at the same time, sell them <laughs> yeah. for other products. So while they're cutting and while they're going in with cameras and, you know, scissors and knives and all those king things, we had to be highly acutely aware of when the best time is to speak. Yeah. Not only speak, but sell. So this, all these little variables would not even enter my head that this yeah. even existed. Yes. Yeah, well, it's a whole, it's a whole other world. It's a whole other world. Yeah, and, mm. and and you know what? For those who are listening, you, you've got to look at this picture of what you've said since you know half, even just half an hour ago, forty five minutes ago, from where you were a, a, a little fat stuttery kid <laughs> yes. in school with holes in his pants and got no money for clothing. Yeah. Now you're in a um, a surgeon in a surgery with a surgeon advising and mentoring them on the products yes <laughs> incredible yeah yeah my 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 friends would often look at me and think how the hell did you get here like how like how did you like it doesn't 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 work out that way you're meant to you're meant to still be at the bottom type of thing you know what i mean like even surgeons would assume that because of the way that i spoke and the way that i you know was communicating with them that i also did some type of medical degree and, you know, and I was there. Some of them, when they found out that I was a, a massage therapist, <laughs> some of them would be like, you know what? Good on you, man. Yeah. Like I applaud you. Some of them would be like, something's not right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, like, I don't know how he got through, but whatever. So, um, and I think that's often been my, been my, my strength, my superpower mm. is that I'm always surprising people, including myself. Mm. I would often think, what's the hardest thing I can do? What's the scariest thing I can do? And what's going to make me the happiest? From our conversation today, though, I, th I feel like deep down you always knew that you were capable. You were just masked with... It was yeah, it was that voice. Yeah. That voice inside of me that knew that I wanted more. It was all the other voices that was but keeping it down. Yeah, it was just a noise. Yeah. But I had this one this one voice that was showing up like a candle. Right? That was like all these other noise was 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 trying to light it, you know, was trying to blow it out. But whenever they were blowing it, it actually created more fire in me. That's, that's how I see it. Mm. Mm. And yeah, I was never going to take no for an answer. I love that. That, that is, that is a Stephen Bartlett thing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is, isn't it? No, not say, uh, yeah, that's a Stephen Bartlett thing. And Simon Cowell, I listened to the Simon Cowell episode as Diary yeah. the other day when he just wouldn't say no and, and wouldn't accept anything less. And that's exactly yeah. what you, that what you did in, in, in leading your own way. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, where did that end then? So you did that for how long did you do that for? I did that for another four years. Yeah. Um, highly stressful environment, very competitive. Yeah. Uh, again, the company was going through some tough times and they put pressure on the team, on the staff. It wasn't us, you know, <laughs> we were just, yeah. we were just the messengers, you know? So, um, one day I, um, I just called up my boss and I just said, Hey, I'm not coming in. No, I didn't have another job to go to. I said, I, I, I can't do this anymore. Uh, I can't do this for my mental health. I can't do this for my stress. Um, yeah, I couldn't do it. They were really tough. They're really, really tough. I mean, good on you for just making that call. Um, but it, you don't do that easily. No, especially like think about everything leading up to that, mm. like everything that I had built yeah, to get to that point. I was trying to hold on to it. And I knew that once I made that phone call, it was all going to go away. Yeah. How long do you think you were holding on to it for? Um, I think I was holding on 
ever since pharmaceuticals, like what I found is that I was just holding on to environments that were toxic. Yeah. Most people do, but, I think. They do, and it's it's not right. No, I agree. <laughs> like why like why like now thinking about it now, it's like why do I need to be why do I need to be around things that are toxic? Agreed. Thing, like what so obviously again, what was happening inside of me? You know, not deserving. So I I felt that I was never good enough to go to somewhere better. Right? Hence why people stay in toxic relationships in general. Mm -hmm. They feel that, hey, you know, I'm just gonna stick here because this is this is as good as I can get. Yeah. And I'm scared of going somewhere else because no one else will take me. Mm -hmm. This is exactly how I felt. Yep. That I just stuck around out of fear because I thought no one else would take me in. Yeah, wow. Hmm. So what was the next step then for Kurim? So the next step was, um, yeah, me opening up another business. Um, my wife was pregnant. I thought that I wanted to, I went into, into it thinking I want to buy back my time. So I went into a business because I knew my son was coming and I wanted to spend time with him and, and my wife. Um, but it was the opposite. <laughs> Setting up a business is not easy, especially the, 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 the line of business that you went into. What, yeah. What was the line of business that you went so into? So I, I went into a restaurant cafe. <laughs> that takes up 23 hours, doesn't it, a day? Oh, I thought, look, I I was always... I always loved the idea of having my own restaurant and cafe. I love cooking. I love food, <laughs> obviously. Um, so I've, I was, I've always felt the, you know, the romance around having your own cafe and, and your own restaurant. I've always wanted to do a cafe just because I wanted to talk to people. <laughs> sure. But I kept joking to people. I just can't afford the chef because I can't cook. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I thought too. I thought, you know, I would come in and, you know, the staff would give me my coffee and, you know, I'll talk to the, you know, to my customers and, mm. you know, or, you know, I'll be playing, you know, like some pretty cool music in the background and I'll be, you know, so cool and all that kind of thing. And yeah. it was totally far from that. I'm glad you've told me before I go and do it. <laughs> <laughs> people, people that I speak to now, that I've been in, in that, in that, in that game. Um, they're all like, they've either got PTSD from it. Yeah. Wow. Right. Or they're like, I don't even know why I'm doing it. Like, it's so tough. It's so cutthroat. It's so tough. There's so many moving parts and pieces to making it all work. It's far from glamorous. Yeah. So you did, how long did that survive then? Cause I know this wasn't a great time for you, was it? This was the time when, yeah, all, everything fell apart. My son was born the same week. Um, my wife found me curled up into a ball. Um, so that was the week, all that, sorry to cut you off, that, that, yeah. when you were curled up in the ball, was that the week of the closing of the business? No, no, that wasn't the week of. So it was, um, how long was it? Probably like a month, uh, not a month, a year and a half. After closing. No, no, no. Sorry. So w once I settled into the business, oh, yeah, okay. It was about a year, a year and a half, when I, when my wife found me curled up into a ball, mm. and my son was was already born by then. He was probably one. Um, yeah. So it was a really, t it was a really tough time. So, so what happened that day? I know it's more than that, but what happened that day for you to f go into that position? and going in, into that state? I think it was like, I'm either going to go down sinking and just accept it. Um, or I'm going to find a way out. And this spark kicked in again. And I'm getting goosebumps as I'm talking about this now. Oh. I had a choice. Mm -hmm. I could either just accept my fate and think, you know, this is, this, this is, this is it or find a way out. 
um, and this was already after, you know, looking into other things like why wasn't my business working? You know, it, it was marketing. It was everything else. Right. Um, and then, yeah, I just, I thought I need to learn more about understanding why I'm doing this. What's, you know, why am I curled up into a ball? Mm-hmm. So I, um, yeah, looked into um, human behavior. And I remember thinking about Tony Robbins, you know, about NLP. Yeah. So I remember, you know, studying that and um, yeah, started studying and yeah, it was. So what was the title of your course that you went to go back and study? Um, it was called, I don't think it was a title. It was like learn NLP, learn hypnotherapy. Ah. Yeah, learn um, uh, timeline therapy. It was a whole, whole, whole different thing. A whole different, you know, all these, all, all these different types of stuff mm. um, that the school was was uh, teaching. So, and if we miss, if we've missed anything out in that in that transitional period, bring me yeah. back. That's fine. But yeah. you mm-hmm. now have a uh, a method and it's called the Karim Bokhtor method. Have I said that correctly? It's called the Bokhtor method. Yeah. The Bokhtor. Right. Oh, so you don't have your first name in it. Yeah. It's just the Bokhtor method. That's right. Cause I remember seeing it and then I saw the TM on your social <laughs> media the other day and I thought that yeah. looks good how you've done that by the way. Yeah. 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 Um, most of just remember this, your, your, your username being just above it. Yeah. Uh, so the book tour method, am I saying that correctly? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Cool. Uh, talk to us a little bit about the method then. Cause, um, I'm interested. So I had, I had gone through now, you know, studying a whole bit, a whole bunch of different type of stuff. Mm. Um, I just loved it and I didn't and I, like, it's like, oh my gosh, I found what I, what I loved doing and what I wanted to do. Like, this was my calling. I've always been intrigued about how people did things and, you know, I loved human behavior and I loved to question why, you know, a lot of the things. Um, so then I went and learnt under the best doctor. So I learnt under Dr. Tad James, which which was one of the teachers who learnt NLP, which I learnt NLP from, uh, hypnotherapy, timeline therapy. And then I also learnt under um, one of probably the, the smartest philosophers today, uh, Dr. Um, John Martini. And I remember coming out of all of those courses in those classes thinking my world has just been blown. But But the problem is, is that a lot of these people who learn and study these, these things, they go off and they just pick one modality to choose. Like they're either, you know, a Martini facilitator or they're an NLP person or they're a hypnotherapy person. And I couldn't do it. I couldn't be that one thing. So do you cater all, so do you go in there, analyze the business, the leader, the person and and use whatever, whatever you feel out of all of that into the personality, the character of the person who's in front of you? Initially, that's uh, initially once I went out into the workforce, that's what I did. I just thought, okay, well, I've got a whole bag of goodies. Mm. Which tools do I use? Yeah. And it wasn't until I started to experiment and think, oh, what if I put this here and I put this there? And what I ended up doing was I integrated all of the best pieces, all of the best parts into one method. So it really gave a really big um, effect on helping people rewire their brain in such a short time. Love it. Yeah. And if, uh, you, you, I don't know if you can, you can't necessarily go into detail, but could you, could you give me a um, i'm trying to picture what maybe one of those things what the best part of that is and the one part that you took from hypnotherapy the one part that you took from so nlp is more like scrambling your brain scrambling your brain to confuse your brain so it can't do that same thought process the problem with that is that it's not a long term Solution. Uh, solution. Yeah. It works it, like it works well in some cases. Brilliant, right? But it's good for for its for its thing. Um, 
then we then timeline therapy is probably one of the most powerful tools that I learned in helping uh, letting go of your past negative emotions. So things that you've held onto from the past that control your future, that if we uh, use this tool called timeline therapy, it would help people let go of of those things, of those bags that, that are holding us back. Mm. But it was too quick and too short. Um, it was effective, but from my experience, it could have been done better. Yeah. And then hypnotherapy, right? So just normal hypnotherapy is like, you know, quitting smoking, you know, someone's reading from a, like a piece of paper and they're just reading something to you, you know, while you are in your subconscious. Mm. So they're reading a script. It's great. Again, it's great, but there's um, a lot of the times people would say, you know, I can't be hypnotized or it didn't work for me. Um, you know, it didn't last all those types of things. Yeah. So I had to work with a lot of these pros and cons, right. To take out all the bugs. And then there was the Demartini method, which is a whole different program again, um, which was um, all about nothing's ever missing in your life. That whatever you're perceiving as a drawback, um, there was a benefit. Mm. That was his philosophy, right? Obviously, there's more to it, yeah. but it, but it's around that. Um, so I had to really understand how could I integrate everything into that, into those modalities. That's amazing. Mm. Has anyone ever done anything like that before? Join us tomorrow to hear more from today's incredible guests and learn valuable insights to help you lead your own way. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you then.